Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I am terribly sorry that I didn't upload a video last week but I was on vacation so uh, I didn't have internet access and that's why I couldn't make a video. However, I'll make it up for you today with a long detailed tank review of the T-71, a tier 7 American light tank. Now I just want to get this out of the way and point out that I am not a very good light tank driver. I mean I'm alright but I don't really enjoy the playstyle that much and I'm not excellent at it. That being said though the T-71 is really an amazing tank and considering that it is a light tank which is not really my preferred tank class I had a really good time driving it. So let's get stuck into the review. Before we have a look at the stats I want to quickly go through the research tree of the T-71 which as you can see leads up to the T-57 Heavy, an amazing tank and um, its main competition at Tier 7 are basically the Bulldog and the French AMX 1375. Now the research tree of the T-71 is quite straightforward actually. You should first of all unlock the Tier 7 gun, which is an autoloader, and that actually weighs 500 kilograms less than a stock gun. So that will give you a boost in your maneuverability and also in your firepower, so that's very important. After that, get the engine and then the radio. And last of all, you can unlock the tracks, but you do not need them for the load capacity. However, I'd still recommend them. They are not that expensive to research at 8,300 experience points, and they will give you better terrain resistance and traverse speed. Stat-wise, the T-71 gets 840 hit points, which is alright at tier 7 for a light tank. That's actually slightly above average. It weighs just below 17 tons with my loadout, however I haven't mounted any equipment. That is extremely light and you have to just be super careful about colliding with enemy vehicles and even vehicles on your team. It gets quite a nice engine with 400 horsepower, allowing it to go at almost 65 kilometers an hour and giving it a power to weight ratio of 23.58 which is really good. So this tank can definitely move around the battlefield at a very good speed. Also it turns at 56 degrees per second which is amazing and the turret traverse speed is 42 degrees per second so that is really impressive and this tank is just super maneuverable. Obviously because it's a light tank though <laughs> it comes with hardly any armor 25 and 22 millimeter front actually the hull has got 22 millimeters all round and uh, 22 millimeter on the side of the turret 90 at the rear Basically, any tank you'll be matched up against will have a gun that will overmatch your armor. They'll start firing high explosive ammunition at you, and you have got hardly any protection in this vehicle. So, you have to just use your speed and maneuverability as your protection rather than armor and hit points, as in all light tanks. The gun is really nice on this vehicle, and I actually want to compare this gun to the AMX 1375's gun because that's obviously its main competitor and uh, yeah the gun actually shapes out quite nicely. It can carry six shells in its clip just like the French gun and the reload time in between shots is only two seconds just like the French vehicle. Now that is really good because it will allow you to empty your clip really quickly and definitely chunk down lightly armored targets. The reload time of the clip is slightly higher, or actually quite a bit higher even, on the T-71. It has to reload 4 seconds longer than the AMX 1375. However, it gets way better penetration with its standard ammunition, which is actually APCR ammo. 175mm is really good for a tier 7 light tank and it is just way better than the 144mm that the AMX 1375 gets. Interestingly, the standard ammunition of the T-71 is armor-piercing composite rigid, which has a very high shell velocity, so that will help you when you're taking long-range shots. The alpha damage is also 15 higher on the T-71, which is quite pleasant. The accuracy, however, is not that amazing at 0.39. It is acceptable for a light tank but the French vehicle is way superior of 0.36 but the T-71 makes it up again with its 2.1 second aiming time which is absolutely amazing. All in all 
in my opinion, the T71's gun is way better than the AMX 1375's gun because the longer clip time doesn't really matter too much because you can just draw into cover while you're clipping. And the higher alpha damage penetration and aiming time is just very, very good. And actually, in my opinion, aiming time is more important than a light tank than accuracy. So that's very nice. The view range is 400 meters, that is excellent, and 745 meters of signal range is standard as well. So that's very good, but those are very good base stats with the only drawbacks really being low armor and low hit point pool, which are not really that surprising considering that this is classified as a light tank. But it's not all in the stats because if we have a look at this tank, you'll be able to see that Almost the entire side of the T-71 is covered with its tracks. So that means that almost all shots to the side of your tank will take out your tracks. Also, the engine deck is quite big on this tank, so you have a problem with being set on fire. And in my experience, the ammo rack takes damage quite easily as well. So you'll definitely want to be taking that fire extinguisher and also a repair pack in your kit. For crew skills, I would definitely recommend going for camouflage it really depends on your playstyle. if you want to play as a scout camouflage is really good even if you want to play aggressive still camouflage is just such a good skill on light tanks so i would almost always get it brothers and arms is good also repairs on the entire crew would be definitely uh, a good idea but really as uh, the moment my Commander reaches 100% on its camouflage on its camouflage skill. I'm going to swap that for six cents. Six cents is just really useful. Also, you should probably get situational awareness on your commander, who is also your radio operator, just to enhance your view range. Smooth ride and snapshot would be good for gunner and loader to improve your on the move accuracy, especially considering that your accuracy isn't that good anyway. And also consider getting safe storage on either your commander or your gunner because they are also your loaders and that will help with the ammo rack problem. As you can see I didn't bother mounting any equipment on this tank because I just figured it wasn't worthwhile for a tier 7 vehicle to spend that much money on it. But if you are just really in love with this tank then you should definitely get a vertical stabilizer. You cannot get a tank gun rammer on this vehicle because it's a light tank. So it really depends how you want to play. If you want to play as a passive scout, you would be well advised to get vertical stabilizers, binocular telescope and the camo net. If you want to active scout or roam, then you should get vertical stabilizer, a set of coated optics and improved vents. So that's the setup I would go with. For your ammunition loadout, actually I don't think I customized this. So you should not really rely on these numbers here. The loadout I'd probably I would go for would probably be something like this. I think this would be more or less ideal probably. 42 APCR shells, 12 heat and 6 HA. And you've got a lot of ammunition capacity. So realistically speaking, you will never run out of ammunition in this tank. Yeah, play style. We haven't discussed that yet, at least not thoroughly. So, as I said already, there are two options in this tank. Either you can play as a scout or as a roaming assassin. If you choose to mainly uh, go for one playstyle, that doesn't mean that you automatically cannot perform the other role in the game later on, maybe. So, how I would probably play this vehicle is... Passive scout or maybe even active scout, although I personally think that passive scouting is more effective for the first few minutes of the game and then when, for example, your team has started to win the battle, then you can just roam around the battlefield and clean up. But if you see an opening of the enemy lines, feel free to go for the enemy artillery or try to flank round because once you get behind your enemies, this 90mm autoloading gun will absolutely chew them apart. It is a complete terror. You have to always be careful though because although your autoloader basically is an advantage in engagements, if you f empty your clip, you are very vulnerable and you should run away and reload completely before you re-engage, especially considering that your reload is longer than, for example, the AMX 1375s. Still, if you, for example, meet an AMX 1375, you should definitely go for the one-on-one -on -one engagement because 
you should usually come out on top because your alpha damage and penetration is better and uh, you've both got the same clip emptying time and the same amount of shells in your clip. So, pretty straightforward. I've got some gameplay lined up for you guys. Actually, only one game today. So, um, yeah, we've spawned on Redshire in quite a standard matchup for the T71. This is a tier 10 game, as you can see, and you will see a lot of these. Redshire is actually a decent map for the T71, I feel. In my opinion, a problem with many World of Tanks maps is that they do not really offer many opportunities for light tanks. But Redshire is really one of the few on which you can do some scouting and actually also effectively flank around your enemies. So I've gone into this position here from where I hope to passive scout enemies advancing to the kind of canyon on the eastern side of the map. And as you can see, that E100 got completely shot to bits thanks to our spotting and that wouldn't have been possible if we hadn't located up here so uh, that was some good work we did for our team already right there and it is really good uh, this is something that uh, you will just learn if you play enough battles in world of tanks it's just spots where you can go as a scout on world of tanks maps in random battles and get scouting uh, or get vision on your enemies and, uh, I mean, that's probably so if you're new to the game, you will not know these positions, but from watching YouTube videos or also just playing games, uh, you will just find out about these positions. Now, I took a shot there. The reason, I, I just want to quickly pause, or I'm not going to pause it here, but I'm just going to quickly explain why I uh, took a shot there, although it was passive scouting, so really you should never fire your gun when you're passive scouting. But I realized that all the enemies had already moved through that... Uh, kind of my field of vision and had already gone into the canyon or yeah that little gorge over there so I realized that I wouldn't be able to get any more spots off from there so I just decided to take a shot my mistake right there was over that I st stuck around after I had taken my shot I should have just directly made a run for it after I took that shot so I uh, went behind the ridge line to get to cover because obviously I had been spotted and now I am going to come up here because as you can see all these tanks here are engaging my teammates and actually my team seems to be losing right now so I decided to come up here and I almost managed to take out the STA-1 however he is sniped by the T-57 Heavy before I get a chance but we get some good damage on again, uh, off against that T-125 and I retreat to clip so I realize now that they've kind of become aware that I'm over here, so I have to engage. When I re-engage, re I have to do it from a different angle now. So I come from back here, and I actually try to hit the T125, but he draws me cover. So I'm just going to go for FE instead. I bounce, and now I just decide, you know, screw this, I'm just going to go ham. Even if I die, it's going to be worth it, because I'm going to take out a tier 10 heavy tank. I'm going to take a shot here. But, you know, uh, that was definitely worth it. I'm going to repair my engine and I'm clipping right now. You can reload your clip even if you haven't fully uh, emptied your magazine by pressing the C key. Uh, at least if you've got an English keyboard, that is. And I'm just going back to the river here or, yeah, the little stream or whatever this is. Because I've, I'm being shot at. I was still being shot at while I was retreating, so I just want to be 100% sure that I'm in cover here. And now uh, we can see a Waffentrig of E100 and we get a shot off, we can see the great aiming time of his gun and he, we saw him aiming at us so we draw back before he can get a shot off. And as you can see probably thanks to our, uh, our contribution up there, our tier 10 tanks were able to push through on that flank. So we're winning this game now, scores 85, and uh, unfortunately I decide to clip right here. I should have probably not done that in retrospect, but uh, yeah, now the uh, we lose sight of the Waffentrager. So I decide that uh, staying around here is not really the best thing I can do right now, and I should probably continue to help these tank destroyers and the IS-7 to push into the enemy base. 
The weapon figure spotted again, but we know that he can't hit us because we're behind these buildings. Now I have to be careful here because often there are tank destroyers camping up here and there's still a Rhine Metal and the AT-15 on the enemy team that haven't been spotted yet. And sure enough, there's the AT-15. We get very lucky there. Uh, and <laughs> as if we haven't been lucky enough yet, we bounce the shot from the AT-15. He must be cursing right now. So this is a very bad position for me. However, I'm just kind of trying to kite him into, or kind of bait him into coming at me because then he'll just be completely obliterated by those tank destroyers over there. However, he's cleverer than that, so he stays up there and allows me to come round. I would have flanked him right here, but he gets taken out by the object 704. Now there are only two enemy tanks left, and I'm going to speed up the replay here because not that much happens anymore now. As a Carnarvon, he gets taken out before we can get any fire off against him. We know where the Rheinmetall Bosic Waffenträger is now, but I am not going after him. Out of two reasons, first of all, he could kill me. Secondly, <laughs> I'm on a mission to get uh, 100 cap points, so I really wanted to cap the base right there. Unfortunately, my teammates don't let me. Still, that was quite a nice game, and in my opinion, it really showcased the strengths of the T-71 and how you can play this tank effectively. Scouting early on in the game, passive spotting enemies, and then afterwards going ham, helping your ally heavy tanks, pushing through on the flanks, and uh, basically flanking and circling your enemies. So, uh, I hope you could learn something about the T-71 from this replay and let's have a look at the post-game stats to analyse it a bit more. So we got a first class mastery badge, 48,543 credits exactly and 3,176 experience. Interestingly we got a Spartan medal in the T-71, that's quite awesome and uh, yeah we actually didn't even finish top on the team that particular honor went to this object 704 but dealt a blasting 4500 damage still we picked up 1060 experience and dealt 1387 damage and picked up one kill we fired 12 shots which 11 hit and 10 penetrated remembering that this was a tier 10 match that just shows you how good this gun actually is and Fair enough, we were flanking round our enemies and taking shots at their sides, but that's really what you're supposed to do in this tank, so the gun performs really well. And that allowed us to do this quite high amount of damage actually. We received 6 hits of which only 4 penetrated, so we were really lucky in that game. We actually blocked only 135 damage of our armour. We spotted 3 enemy vehicles and also damaged 3 and destroyed 1. And as you can see, we enabled our team to deal almost 4,000 damage to our enemies. So we had quite a good impact on that game for our team. And also, this tank was very cheap to run. We only had to pay about 10,000 credits for our resupply. And we're able to keep 38,000 credits in that game. So that's quite a good result. All in all, the T71 is an absolute blast to play, in my opinion. As I already said, I don't really enjoy the light tank playstyle that much. Still, I really like this tank, and I think even if you aren't really that much of a light tank driver, but maybe you prefer medium tanks, the T-71 might still be a really good vehicle for you, because you do not necessarily have to perform the role of a scout. You can still dish out quite a lot of damage in this tank while still being effective, even in high tier games. So, um... Uh, T-71 for me personally probably is the strongest light tank at tier 7. Please let me know what you think about this tank. I'm looking forward to your comments and if you enjoyed this video and it was informative or educational for you, make sure to like it and maybe even subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video or maybe even on the battlefield. Bye bye.